This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are popping all kinds of cans with Michael Kaiser as we talk about uppers and downers. Not only the event, but the week. Dude, these last three weeks, are we, do you, what'd you make it to? Yeah, because, you know, you got a court locked out, boop, the just flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, I, how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick Wade. And we got a special guest in the studio with us. Special guest, man. You know, uh, uppers and downers week is upon us. We have the uh, the one and only uh, Michael Kaiser from Good Beer Hunting. Yeah, man. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for introducing it as a week. <laughs> <laughs> that is hard to explain to people. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's it's growing, man. This is uppers and downers six. Damn. And uh, we got a lot to dive into, man. Yeah, you, good, were, man. you were pulling up some notes and you have... You have the list of the events and everything you know, that's happening. I let's, that somebody does. <laughs> Let, let's hope I, I can like, read oh, this shit. shit. I gotta, you know, I, you know, <laughs> you know information I, together. I got that lefty scribble, like my mom says. You know, it's like, how do you read this shit? So first off, we're drinking some beer. You brought us some uh, some tasty treats here. Yeah. As always, you can't have a beer podcast without drinking. I, I feel like I would not be allowed to show up empty-handed. <laughs> uh, and we cracked open this uh, Rolling Meadows beer. Yeah. Yeah, so these are clients' bars down in uh, down outside of Springfield on a farm uh, in a place. It's li- literally called Rolling Meadows Farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not the suburb up here called right, Rolling Meadows. Right. This is way downstate uh, on an old family estate. There, it's like certain like they're they are a farm and they are surrounded by farms and like they've been managing that for uh, a couple generations now. Huh. Started a little brewery down there. Started by uh, the people the guys who run it now. The family who runs it now is like mother, children, and. Uh, and it was the mother that started it, like way back. I was yeah. like, a, she was basically home brewing, like growing oh, wow. wild stuff on the farm and just like screwing around while she was there gardening and stuff with friends of hers. Uh, so it goes a little ways back. It's pretty cool. But so then now they're a client of yours. What were they doing beforehand? Was it just the home just brewing? Like, like yeah, friends, well, she was like... she was home brewing, and her <laughs> kids were the ones that were like kind of got into it after that, and then kind of got the idea like maybe we should start a little farm brewery, like a little tiny commercial operation. Okay. Uh, it's a little thing, like seven barrels, I think. Um, so it's it's real tiny, but it's enough to spread some beer around, you know, neighboring counties and things mm-hmm. like that. Uh, they're in like the local high V's down there, which is like our Jewel Osco. Yeah. Um, so they were doing that for a little bit, getting pretty good at it, and uh, but they they never really had their brand together, and they never really had an idea of like what kind of beers they should be making and things like. They were just kind of like screwing around a little bit and like yeah. kind of being commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and I think at some point it was the mom that was like, "Yeah, this turns into a business or it's done." Like I'm tired of like okay. paying for this expensive seven barrel <laughs> yeah. homebrew kit you're basically you operating guys, here. You guys are just <laughs> drunks. Like you gotta either make money or. <laughs> So yeah, she lit a fire under their ass a little bit. Uh, she's super cool, um, and she's basically still the heart of the brand and 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 who they are. I mean, it's her farm, you know. Okay. Um, and so it's been it was cool to kind of go down there. And the thing we always love to do is just like learn about the people we're working with and like what they're passionate about, what they're interested, in, what the rest of their lives are, and stuff. And so getting to go down there and seeing, like, you know, everybody these days says they have a farm brewery of some sort or farmhouse inspired, but yeah. when I actually rolled up onto the property and realized it was a legit operating, cool little family farm, it's not just uh, farmhouse ale, just like yeah. an actual farm. Yeah, <laughs> that was a game changer for me. I mean, they, yeah, they have livestock on that place. Um, yeah, so we just got to, we just got to work trying to trying to design something that felt like it was a part of their world. You know, they're big in like farmers markets and like the the fair down there once a year and things like that. So a lot of yeah. the branding comes from like from old like farm inspired equipment or farm brands and tractors and like old farmers journals that we found when we started doing some research. And so oh. all the typography and illustration style and all that kind of comes from that inspiration. Oh, neat. Uh-huh. This uh, this description on the uh, Honest Brown is a trip. It's for those oh, uh, book flipping, scale tipping, liar whipping, trust the facts, take the pack days. That's, <laughs> that's funny, right? Nice. <laughs> that's good. I love the copy on these <laughs> things, man. It's so much fun. Dude, yeah. now um now with GBH man like I could be wrong but I don't think it started as a consultancy or was it oh, always no. like that no, in, in the beginning no, no. it was like you and you were just like kind of taking pictures taking and... pictures covering yeah. events writing stories it started yeah you and me and... were doing the same thing yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm like was he always like a consultant no like this? I mean I, I I worked at an agency for a while yeah. uh, on the innovation side of things which is like new products uh, new services things like that like we would be like pretty inventive and engineer stuff and prototype it and all that. Mm-hmm. 
so that was my day job and I just got really interested in beer because one of the clients at my first my first agency job was one of the clients there was Miller was Miller before it was Miller Coors we used to have mm-hmm. to do like packaging innovation for, for them and stuff like that yeah. and I learned a ton about the beer business that way and then at the second agency I was at um, AB InBev became one of their clients uh, and so I learned a ton about the beer business from that that project as well um, and I just kind of got obsessed with like how weird and gnarly the beer business is like, it's, <laughs> it's like no other industry uh, out yeah. there and then I started paying attention to what was happening in these little niches of the beer industry when it was starting to pop off a little bit in the early 2000s again. Uh, and that's what got me photographing and writing about beer in that way. Okay. And so that blog was just like driven by just like pure curiosity of like what the hell was going on out there. Yeah. There was all these, you know, all these people that were starting these tiny little breweries that all seemed like they were kind of cut from the same cloth, but they didn't really know each other at the time. You know, they were kind of all just off in their own little Petri dishes around, around the country. And uh, being able to write about them and connect some of those larger narratives together was was kind of a cool thing to be able to do. How, how big is the crew these days? Well, the, the studio team, which is what I run. I, I'm the creative director of the studio team, which is all the brand and consulting stuff. Uh, that's about seven people. Wow. And then the editorial team that Austin and Brian basically run now on their own. Uh, it's, last I remember it was around 40-something. Oh, jeez. Um, but they're scattered all over the world. <laughs> Man, you know, they, we got we to gotta stop up our team here. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, you know, we're talking to you. We're talking to uh, Porsche Drinking, and we're just totally surprised by how many people are, sure. are, are helping run these run these operations. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you can't you – can't, I mean, a lot of these magazines that try and run from, like, a central location, usually New York for some reason uh, – you mean you can't you can't run it all from the same place like something like beer this particular industry is so spread out and it's so mm-hmm. regionalized and what's cool in some area might not be cool in another and like to try and stay abreast of all that you can't just have a bunch of people in an office in Chicago writing about that stuff you know I think that's how you end up with magazines that are kind of just vapid you know they don't really they're just they're just googling stuff on the internet and trying to summarize it all yeah, they're, they're not really paying attention top to ten lists of, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, did anyone try these no okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone try these? That's usually one of my first questions. Yeah. <laughs> Did they go there? I don't know. Yeah. So no, those people got to be spread out all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like you have a you're locally based, but you have a national perspective, and that kind of explains it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right on. Right on. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we we were drinking the coffee break uh, a few weeks ago, and that also was a, from them. Yeah. From Rolling yeah. That's Rolling cool. and that kind of I don't know. It was part. Is it part of? Uh, uppers and downers are they going to be there featuring that yeah, beer they're going to they're be there i i think they might bring that beer but okay. i think they're also maybe experimenting with some stuff and maybe want to bring something else i'm not sure oh, cool. exactly what i mean this is one of the things i love about uppers and downers is i kind of get to show up and try everything <laughs> for the first time along wow. with everybody else okay yeah. um like most of these are not beers that have ever been on the market they're making them just for that festival so mm-hmm. when they get tapped is when i get to taste them um so that'll be kind of interesting but uh yeah, that beer, that the coffee break beer was uh, a big deal for them this year. They won a good food award, and they've got oh, wow. they've got kind of a neck full of good food awards. Like it's kind of a thing for them, you know. Which I mean, those awards are really based around people who care about ingredients mm-hmm. and and grow stuff, and so that's been a big deal for them winning those over the years. And they picked one up for coffee break this year, which is pretty cool. That's cool, yeah. Um, so then, yeah, uppers and downers for anyone that hasn't been, it's a beer and coffee event. I mean, you oh, start I, you start wagging to tell you here beer and coffee festival yeah. yeah and you immediately are like oh okay yeah tell me more right <laughs> and not just a coffee beer festival like right. those are two different we always described it as like coffee beer and coffee beers because uh, okay. all those things are kind of in the mix but uh and this year we're doing cocktails we're expanding the food um we got a lot going on this year yeah at talia hall mm-hmm. a place that i believe is on the national register for historic places yeah that's okay. pretty cool um was it at other locations has it always been at talia hall the festival has always been at Talia Hall. Okay. The original one that we did for like 100 people was out in Pasadena at an Intelligentsia Cafe. Right. That was like the, that's where we kicked off the whole idea of Uppers and Downers. And then when, and that was real successful. So we brought it back here and started the festival and Talia Hall's been our partner there ever since. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we did one in London last year for a couple hundred people. We're going back to London this year. And then we're going to try and flip the switch on Berlin this year too. We've got some friends well, over there that want to help us pull it off. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, man, we go to a lot of parties, man. And it's, it's a, it's a thoughtful festival for lack of a better term right on, right? Yeah. like uh even all the way down to the colorway like i'm going to the pm session and i noticed that all, everything in the place with all the signage is like a totally different color than yeah. it was in, in the in the previous session mm-hmm. and yeah and it's it's going it's going outside it. you're calling them case studies they're going completely outside of what we typically associate with like yeah, coffee, for sure. coffee and beer yeah so like a lot of people bring like one beer or in, in a few cases a couple beers like goose island's bringing two beers the barley wine and bcs this year uh, so there's a few, and Allagash I think is doing a tea beer and, a, and then a coffee beer, but most people just bring one beer, serve that the whole time. And then, 
And then we do what, we, what you refer to as case studies, which is a roaster and a brewer get together to put on like this crazy sensory experience. They get like a whole like eight foot table all to themselves. This year we're actually building a whole bar just for Cruz Blanca and Sparrow Coffee to go nuts. Mm. Uh, and the stuff that they're going to be doing is like next level. So it's like four or five different beers that they're making that are all different kind of concoctions. Some of them just sound like cocktails. Uh, okay. And then Sparrow okay. is going to take some beer ingredients and make some really rad like NA drinks. Um, so they're, like they're going to be using like roasted barley, I think, mm-hmm. in one of them. And um, they're using un- unfermented wort in one of the drinks and like making these like really rad mm-hmm. sort of like concoctions that I don't have any precedence for. Like, I don't really, I'm doing a terrible job of describing it right now because yeah. I don't really know what they're supposed to be. But Sparrow, is that, are they local? Is that local crew? They're down in Fulton Market, West Fulton Market, down, okay. down, down, down near me, yeah. Nice. But the Cruz Blanca stuff, Nick, you've, You've basically fallen in love with this. Dude, it's I blown thought your last way, year right? was their coming out party. You know, yeah. I think they had the, the the most options. A and then B. It was stuff that I had didn't think in my head when I read the description didn't make sense to that, me. That like pineapple sour thing that yeah. you pulled together with the coffee was yeah. mind blowing. And then I went I went to Cruz Blanca like uh, like a week later, and it had something called marigold. It was like a yeah. it was Mexican sugar, tart blackberries, and coffee. And mm-hmm. I'm like, man, it's almost like a like they're recreating like a like a dark wine and it was just like <laughs> it with coffee i'm like it, it, yeah. it, it blew me i was kind of like and it's wow. stuff i think like melds together better than just about anybody else's that yeah. way like it tastes like one thing it doesn't taste like a beer with three or four things in it you know like it all has like this really nice meld yeah let me let me read a couple of the things that he sent us over <laughs> some notes uh chardonnay barrel aged pineapple saison with cascara and nicaraguan pacamara then we got a uh <laughs> And then we've got a Belgian triple with hibiscus, Papua New Guinea pea berry, and a Columbia honey blend. Pea-berry. And then here's one of those things. Oh, yeah, this is just nuts. Here's one of the things that they're doing. It's, uh, it's basically going to be cotton candy, spun sugar with a Kenyan coffee powder and malt powder. Uh, uh-huh. So using some beer and coffee ingredients to basically make a cotton candy. <laughs> man. <What? laughs> I don't know, man. They showed a video today of them make, making the actual cotton candy portion of it. Yeah. And like, this is one of the things I get to do when I see people like posting updates about what they're doing is like I just watch and I'm like you're bringing that to my festival like I don't how are you gonna serve that what are you doing <laughs> and I just have to kind of like wait until it shows up and just figure it out be like but, okay so yeah yeah but after last year like the experience you had is yeah. is what most people felt about them last year and so this year we were just like what if we just make you the case study this year and like huh. give you the whole floor build a bar right in the middle of the floor for them uh, I'm pretty psyched I think they're making some of the best stuff in Chicago right now. Yeah, yeah, we we keep cracking uh, during the Black Friday stuff. I went and picked up those Luchador series, some of yeah. those beers, and every time we open one, we're just like, "Oh my god, this is so good!" <laughs> like it's just, like... And, you know. And a lot of times on those on those post shows, we have beers, and we're just like, you know, we're not here to throw roses, you know. Like we have some great divide stuff, and we had a couple of brews, and we just if we didn't like it, we didn't like it. Yeah. And we were really we were really taken aback by the Cruise Blanca stuff. It yeah. was it was impressive stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Man. It's amazing how much he's how much variety of that stuff he's getting out of that tiny little spot down on randolph like there's no room in there for barrels i don't know how he's pulling it up yeah and then who knew who knew that this was his mo like because he was i was i we took the brew bus to uh clybourne a lot when he was the head brewer there yeah and these types of examples didn't really exist at clybourne because i was there every week you know mm-hmm, so, right. uh, so it's, it's it's a cool it's cool to just see that that evolution of uh sembrano jacob jacob yep. yeah over there. yeah i agree um, oh, the GBA studio, man. So I think yeah. I was in. Um, I think you were in Logan, and uh, I think you were interviewing uh, uh, the guy from Brooklyn, Garrett Oliver. There. Yeah. And you walk into the GBA studio, and um, there's this there's this portrait of John Lackler, which always always <laughs> always cracks me up. Right? Yeah, that used to hang there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but so you're moving. It sounds like you're. Oh, are you? We moved. moved. We moved. Okay. Uh, so on Wednesday, I think it is. We're doing the the roaster tour down on West Fulton, where we go from like Metric to Passion House to Intelli and some others. Uh, I think we're gonna kick it off at our new studio, which okay. is down on West Fulton. We're right next right. to like Stock Manufacturing Co. Um, the Chicago uh, Artist Coalition is right next door to us now. We're neighbors. Like it's kind of a bank of uh, industrial buildings that we moved into, that, and we just finished build out, like just in time basically to start hosting some nice. people when they're in town. Um, so I think in April we're gonna have like a little bit of a studio like warming kind of party thing. Cool. For which I hope nobody brings any beer. I've got so much beer to get into people. Uh, I do not need beer. So if you get invited to that, please do not. Just come just come empty-handed. You have my permission. And so this uh, roaster tour around Wednesday, that's part of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things we wanted to do, I mean, this is increasingly, this, is, this festival has become less about coffee beers, of which we still have tons and they're amazing, and more about getting these two cultures together, like mm-hmm. beer and coffee and now bartenders and, and, and mixologists and things like that. So 
one of the things that beer people didn't necessarily have access to was like, what does a coffee roaster even look like? You know, and so we don't That's go fair. we don't go visit them and tour them the way that we do breweries. We don't right. have the same sort of inclination for that. So we hooked up a we hooked up a little tour last year for the first time, and we were curious to see if people would even care. And we got about twenty five people, and we all went on a little walking tour, and they got to see the inside of these things and taste different things and see different kinds of processes and evaluations and. Uh, it was super cool. And people, yeah. like, you know, their eyes were just so big, like looking at these different roasters. Like, if you've ever seen a coffee roaster, like they're beautiful, weird machines. Right? Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of cool to see people seeing those things for like the first time. You know, mm-hmm. getting hands on with it. Because usually, even if you see them at uh, smaller places that have them in the front or something, yeah, they, they're never working. Right. They're, they right, almost right. just look they're like, like sh- they're like old show pieces from a steampunky <laughs> things. It's like, all right, that's cool. I'll take yep. some of your coffee. So when you see it, actually, like, oh, that's how it works. It's yep. cool. Yeah, and that little stretch of West Fulton Market that we're on, like, that's, I mean, there's, like, five or six breweries there and, like, five or six roasters. Like, we're kind of right in the middle of it, uh, which is why we oh, wanted wow. to be down there. Um, and a, and so. uh, that's over there, like, Pass Goose, Pass and Telly, that's where, like, uh, the distillery, uh, Ryan Hall. Yeah, so, yeah, like, we're, like, one block past there. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun little area. I think uh, Salvage One's not too far from there. Yeah. That, that is a cool area. Yeah. Right on, man. So it starts on Tuesday, Uppers and Downers Week, Tuesday the 26th. That's right. right? Um, cocktail competition at St. Yes. Louis Assembly. That's right. That's yeah. the first event this week. All right. And that's like a, it's an Irish coffee cold brew cocktail competition. So we get like, I don't know, there's like six or seven different brewer, bartenders from around the city all using different ingredients, but some common ingredients and then competing with their Irish coffees, which get super creative. I mean... The first time we did it, I was like, oh, cool. I was like, I don't know if people want to taste like six or seven Irish coffees. And I showed up and realized like, oh, nobody, everybody took liberty with that <laughs> to like this like Willy Wonka degree. Um, so that, that turned out just fine. And the, the uh, you know, the guy or the gal that wins that competition then serves that cocktail at the festival. Okay. Um, so that's pretty cool. But then this year we're also serving two other cocktails. We're going to have a cocktail bar at this beer festival, which right. is pretty dope that's so. yeah that's that's one of the new features this year yeah yeah okay. we expanded that spirit side because people, people are getting more and more interested in just like how flavor comes together yeah uh i don't think anybody really cares about the category as much as you know of like coffee and beer and coffee beer so we're just trying to like broaden that out and let people kind of explore like the palette of the room in different ways yeah um, so that's why it's so rad to have you know somebody like sparrow doing all these like interesting na sort of like coffee tea concoction kind of things too yeah, man. Yeah, having I feel like having a good Irish coffee is something probably I have never really had, and most people haven't. You're usually like you're right. at holidays at your family, and like, sure. oh yeah, make some Keurig coffee and yeah, put some, some whiskey <laughs> in there. It's like, all right. Yeah. I've always nope. been a fan of the uh, of the serving vessel, right? Like the uh, you know the handle and the glass mm-hmm. for the for the hot for mm-hmm. a hot beverage, you know. Yeah. But I've never really just like yeah, I've been around people and excited to have yeah. one and, and made different right because usually it's so. just like. Here's some whiskey in your coffee. <laughs> may like, or may not don't suck, right? Care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last year we had like bartenders like microplaning nutmeg over the top and all these like weird like cool ingredients and uh, different f- different ways of serving it. So some were like you know these big like milkshake looking things. Other times they were making these like weird little colored like you know scoop cocktails. Like it was all over the map, man. It was cool. That's cool, man. The mixology piece of this is like is pleasant. It's refreshing. Right? Yeah. Like it's it's a nice jolt to the yeah. uh to the, to the whole thing i like it because you're not just like it's not you're not just going down a line trying to get two ounces of a beer tasted two ounces right. tasted, take yeah. it in and like move on like you're taking breaks like there's different modes in the design of the layout like there's a lineup of brewers and then there's a bunch of coffee roasters like pulling single shot espressos and then there's case studies where you don't even know what you're getting into mm. and you have to hear the pitch a little bit to even understand what it is and yeah Upstairs bar, Guinness is coming back and doing another showing. They're bringing some beers from Baltimore, that new facility. Right. Nice. Um, so that's just like its own little bar within the festival. Um, that was actually the first time. Um, a couple things like that's the first time I learned about your affinity for coffee. Brad's like, I'll drink coffee any all time day. day, all day. Is that right? Until so, <laughs> I go to sleep. It doesn't bug you out. I was like, uh, <laughs> I've been told Maeve she makes me not drink it after 10 p.m. That's yeah. like my limit. So they and, perceive you bugged out, but you, yeah, you feel fine. Yeah, I usually feel fine. So <laughs> yeah, but, I'm like, oh, Brad just goes coffee any any time. I'm like yeah. one cup in the afternoon, and I'm and I'm good. Mm, oh, but good. then also at that fest, I'm like, man, Guinness has a has a Belgian triple. That's funny. I didn't. Yeah, I, yeah. Didn't, I did not know. They're bringing their triple. last sixth of that to this festival. The the Cascara blended triple. Yeah. Um, it's the last one they've got in existence. 
Uh, so I'm pretty excited. I'm glad, I'm glad we got a hold of that. But yeah. at the fest, you're talking about like slowing down or like experience it. And it just kind of happens when you're having that much coffee. Yeah. And like your uh, your body just starts to be like, wait, a, hold on a minute. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you you physically have to slow down. Yeah. You have to like yeah. say, it okay, I had, I had espresso. Let's think about this. Yeah. What am I going to get? You're looking at the list. Yeah, you don't want to become untethered and forget yeah. your place in the universe. Because you, <laughs> you're buzzed and you, and, you got a, and you got a good alcohol buzz too, Because physically, right? do not run down the espresso list and be like, No, slam, I ran into slam, some beer geeks in year, in year one <laughs> who had never really had espresso before. You know, yeah, it's yeah, not that yeah. common in our culture the way it is in some others, but it's becoming more and more so. And, uh, you know, they came up there like, it's so cool. I've never, like, I, you know. Trying to use espressos at a beer festival is really unique. And I was like, oh, cool. Which one did you have? They're like, I tried them all. <laughs> I was like, yo. <laughs> like, let's, let's talk about how's, what caffeine uh, is. How's your heart doing there? <laughs> Take a second. So you do the uh, the walkie tour is uh, Wednesday. Then Thursday is a decaf preview at Middlebrow. And that yes. kind of sounds like um, everyone who's participating in the fest, they're showing off other things? Yeah, not everyone. Just sort of like just, a subset. of. Okay, uh, okay, and, okay. And that was established because we had... You know, we always have a few people coming in from out of town, yeah. uh, brewers that are like really making the trip. It's expensive to do it, like, and we wanted to sh- like show them a little bit more love by like welcoming them in, giving people who are going to the festival a chance to like meet them, you know, outside of the context of the festival, right. and like, especially if it's brands that have never been in this market before, that kind of thing. Um, so this year, it's kind of a mix of those things. There's a few people from out of town, and then a couple of locals that we just want to show off a little bit in a unique way. Uh, Middlebrow is going to host that for us, which is super cool. The brewery that's closed on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, yeah, we'll never. We, we try. We, we, That's how you know them. <laughs> we record on Tuesdays. So we were gonna uh, okay. go. It was like, all right, so Middle Brow and uh, Twisted Tippo are uh-huh. the same distance from here. And we're like, mm. let's go to one or the other. And the guest had never been. Yeah, I see. So we're like, let's go to Middle Brow. And then and you're they disappointed. Were, they were closed. We're like, fuck. Yeah. But yeah. I love that place. Have Pete, been, Pete over there is one of my guys. I don't know. I will. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> He's weird, man, because, like, Beer Temple's, like, half a mile from me. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go. <laughs> me? Me, yeah. I've never gone to Beer Temple. Never? <laughs> just, I've never gone. Ah, and I've been a couple times. And at that, at this point, I can't go. Like, I... <laughs> this is some nonsense. <laughs> it's, like, it's like that dude who has the uh, the podcast who he used to write the jokes for Chappelle show, and the running joke was that Chappelle never made an appearance on yeah, the podcast. Okay. Right? okay. But, <laughs> but anyway. Oh, uh, so. <laughs> yeah, the decaf thing. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> So we call it decaf because brewers are not allowed to bring a coffee beer because, like, okay. we, we're going to get our fill. Like, we're not looking for more of that. Uh, we ask them to bring a beer that they think just kind of represents them in a good way. Yeah. Uh, if it's, you know, imagine that this is somebody who's never heard of you before, doesn't know what you make, what's the beer you want to serve. Um, so Rolling Meadows is going to be one of them. They're gonna, I think they're bringing a beer to guard, which is going to be super cool. Right. Um, Guinness is going to bring their Guinness Extra Stout. We're going to serve it out of the bottle, sl- like, almost room temperature, slightly chilled, which is how they tend to drink it in the old bars in Dublin, which will be cool. I have a big tub with ice in it for that. And then uh, we're going to serve uh, Allagash is going to be there. We're going to have Hopewell, a couple others. I think we have five or six coming. Um, so some out-of-towners, some locals. It'll be kind of cool to mix big and little here and there kind of together. Right on. And Millbrow is going to be a great a great spot for that. Yeah. You're showcasing the tack room the next night. That's, That's for the right. chef's beer dinner. So the tack room is like it's a, it's a room at Tally Hall, I want to say, right? It's like on the first floor. It's the piano bar. It's yeah. piano bar at Tally yeah. Hall. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, last year we tried this thing for the first time ever, uh, where we got a bunch of chefs together to do like individual courses paired with beers, some of which were coffee beers. Uh, some of the courses had some coffee in it, uh, but not everything. It was, it wasn't like a gimmicky thing. Like it just kind of was a thread throughout some of it. Um, and we, so we paired brewers and chefs together to like pull off a course for this dinner. We hosted it in the room where we were setting up for the festival. So it kind of had this like cool connection to it. This year there we're repeating it, but we're doing it at the tack room. A little bit smaller, so there's a little more limited seating. It's like 50 people. Right. Um, and we're a little bit more set up for service, maybe. But they're doing a show, like, that night in Talia Hall, so we couldn't do it there. Okay. Um, so we're kind of moving. Yeah, so we're moving it downstairs into the piano bar, which would be pretty cool. And uh, so we've got five courses. And the chefs we got this year are just as sick as last year. So we've got, uh, let's see here. We've got Andre, uh, Chef Andres from Frontera Group, Noel Sandoval from Oriel. Uh, Michael Galen from Dusex, Mike Simmons of Cafe Mary Jean, and then Mindy Siegel again. Um, and some of these people, like, I I couldn't believe we got the lineup we got last year. Yeah. I, I can't believe we're still getting people to say yes to this that are on this level. <laughs> um, but that says a lot, I think, about, like, the, the whole 16 on Center crew and their relationships and when they have a good idea and they pull it off well. Like, people want to be a part of that. Um, so it'll be pretty cool. Man. 
Sounds good. So a lot going on, man. Then of course Saturday's a fest, yeah. and then, and then, <laughs> and then the festival. <laughs> Saturday's a right. fest. Uppers and downers. Um, AM the, session, PM session. Yeah, and the thing is, there are different sessions. Like you're not, yeah. you don't, you have to, you really do have to choose. You can't like. You can't you know, do both. Can't, yeah, do, can't both. do both. You shouldn't yeah. do both. We did eliminate some of the anxiety that people felt this year by. Okay. It's mostly going to be the same brewer, the same brewers and beers there. Coffee people swap out entirely. It's totally like uh, that, that multi-roaster espresso bar thing we do. Yeah. It's a different set of okay. coffee roasters for each one. The brewers this year, we kept it a little bit more simple so people... Because I kept getting emails and like DMs on Twitter and shit. They're just being like, I want to go to this session for this beer, but I also want to get this beer, this other set. And I'm, you know, I don't want people killing themselves trying to go to two sessions. Right. So, so we kept it simple this year and just did like one lineup okay. basically repeated. Because, yeah, I have... Have felt that when I've gone in the past, like, oh, wait, oh, that's in the second session? Ah, bummer. I'm here now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind creating a little bit of FOMO, but I don't want right. I don't like it when it's confusing and too challenging to, like, figure out what you want to do for the day. Yeah. Because so, we definitely have people buying tickets to both. Oh, I was wow. just like, man, I don't, you should not be doing that. Man. <laughs> You guys nailed it with that location, man, because we've recorded at Six before, and I love yeah. how Six is next door to Tally Hall, and yeah. then it's Tack Room. And Punch House is all the way down yeah. the cocktail Oh, yeah, line. you all yeah. can't forget about Punch House. Yeah, it is it is good vibes in that joint, like, yeah. all the way through. That's it's an unbelievable location. That's a, the that's aesthetics of that place are beautiful. And that balcony is awesome. Like, when you were talking earlier about, like, sometimes you just need to, like, take a minute, take a yeah. break. Uh, this year, the Chicago Reader, the magazine, the newspaper, is... Uh, we gave the, they're taking over the balcony mm-hmm. and making like a lounge up there. You can sit down, oh, cool. read the paper, have some water, just like take it all in because you got a beautiful view from yeah. that balcony. Um, trying to just invite people up there to like chill out for a minute, kind of disconnect from the fest a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many festivals do you go to where you like get to sit in the balcony and like watch it happen? You know, like that's kind of a cool view. It's true. I always I don't know. I spend a lot of time up there during the fest. I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah, I do love that space, man. And then you're recording at Cruz Blanc and to close out the week. Yeah, so the hangover party, as yeah. if we needed, <laughs> as if we needed another gathering. Uh, that's we always equate that to being like the brunch after a wedding, you know, and like people are going to leave town. Uh, so many people travel for this thing, so uh, we'll get them all together. We'll we'll have some people on uh, that were producers, you know, roasters and brewers and whatnot for the fest. Talk to them about like what they made, why they made it, and you know, what they learned, other things they tasted that they thought were delicious, and like kind of do a recap. Yeah, um, and then everybody that goes uh and a ticket's like 10 or 15 bucks it's pretty cheap um you know you get a little you get a little breakfast while you're there you get some coffee we're gonna be pulling some espresso bring you back to life a little bit <laughs> and then send you on your way right that's kind of the that's the uh that's the send-off that's the week wow yeah I didn't yeah. know when we started doing a festival that I was going to end up planning an entire beer week, beer week of yeah. nothing but just my events. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we couldn't do it without all these all these different venues and these producers that help us out and host these things and roasters hosting tours. Like, it's amazing how like how much participation there is from that side of things in this festival. Um, it's you know, we feel like we created a platform and people are just like running with it. Yeah, people are excited to participate. People who like festivals. Yeah. Uh, Excited to see the evolution of the, of the fest format. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, they, they see us pulling in all these geeks. You know, they're like, there's going to be how many coffee geeks there? I want to show them something, you know? And, like, yeah. they get excited about having that kind of an audience. Uh, and increasingly, it's more of, like, a foodie, culinary, beverage kind of audience. Like, it's getting broader and broader every year, which I kind of dig. Yeah. Man, that's groovy, man. You guys have been before, right? Both of you. Last year was my first year. And yeah. then I had been the year before that. Yeah. So. yeah. A couple years ago, the year before that, Weiner was kind of the, yeah. they were the case study, and that was oh, They really did that lactic fermentation coffee in a Belgian mm-hmm. dark ale that was killer. With a four-letter word is yep. Ria's Coffee Company out yep. in, say that, Turkey? Yeah, yep. Turkey. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, underrated. Oh, they're here now. They're, oh, they they're are. right across the street from uh, Cellar Door Provisions and uh, Diversity Wine over there on Armitage. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a really... killer corner now. I go there, I get my coffee, I pick up my wine club, and I have lunch and go home. Man. I don't, I don't need another corner. Huh. <laughs> Right on. All right, uppers and downers week, man. There you have it, man. Oh, let's run through um, some of the uh, some of the pairings, if you or the case studies, if you yep. will. Right? Yeah. Uh, sure. We got Weiner and Four Little Word, uh, Prairie and Caruso. Now I know Prairie is uh, artisan ales down in Oklahoma, right? That's right. All right now, I'm guessing the coffee Caruso is probably from down there too. That's uh, I believe that's their own operation. No, Spaceship Earth is there, so this must be another partner down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last year they did their own coffee. This year they're partnering up with somebody. Right on. Uh, Rolling Meadows, who we're having now with cu- right. uh, with Custom Cup, yep. uh, Sketchbook and Backlot, both in Evanston. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Pollyanna and Tugboat. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Off color and passion house. That's actually cool. Like some of the things you're, some of the roasters you're naming. One of the things that happened over the course of the five years of us doing this is, um, 
coffee roasting has become like micro local, like hyper local as yeah. well. And so like all these little roasters that are getting, you know, they're spot buying, they're getting the best coffees they can from around the world in small batches and make, and making it their own uh, that are partnering with breweries. Cause it used to just be like in Chicago, there was like four or five that you could go to that got the good stuff. And now that good stuff is so spread around, you can yeah. work with somebody in your backyard. So right. most of those roasters you just rattle off, I've never heard of them before. Yeah, but brewers are finding commonality with them and like making some cool stuff, and like they're part of the, they're part of that conversation now. I had no clue that there were so many local roasters. Mm-hmm. We talked about that on this week's episode. Well, and you want as I think the brewer and the brewery, you want to kind of be a little different. You don't want to have intelligentsia because Goose Island's got That's that, true. or right. um, the Dark Matter, like Half Acre and Three Floyds got that. So like, yep. who else we got? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. yeah, you can work with people you like. Yeah, uh, Middle Brown Gaslight. Mm-hmm. Gaslight's uh, one of my favorite. Gaslight has always been one of my favorites in the city. Yeah. And then of course the uh, GI and Intelligentsia, Intelli. Yeah. Neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. We've shared a wall. Right. <laughs> We've heard the story since like 2010 at least, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. so yeah, this is cool, man. I like I like uh, I like how uppers uh, uppers and downers, and then um, far and away. Right, I think two notable local events that are kind of really changing the way we see right the annual festivals, the and annual. not just like here's all the breweries you know about doing their flagships. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was joking with somebody the other day that somebody should run a flagship festival, and it's called Core Beers and Volunteers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's all just throwbacks. We're gonna find somebody to bring Pete's Wicked Ale back to life as a <laughs> as a clone batch. See if we can get some amber ales going. Right. Oh man. <laughs> Right so do bad. Uh, anything else in your notes there, Nick? What no, else? Brad, what we hit everything? That's, that's, it. that's all my. That notes. was a bunch. <laughs> that seems like plenty. Uh, but we do have some other beer that uh, some local, yeah. some more even localer than you know. <coughs> the, they're down in Illinois, uh, but then uh, yeah, C- where are these? Cinderlands is in Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh. Uh, okay. So Paul Schneider, who used to be a brewer at Salamoth. Yes. Uh, he also used to be a blogger back in when uh, you and I yeah. were blogging. Yeah. What was his um? Uh, Shy Town on Tap. Shy Town on Tap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he became a, he got hired on at Salamoth, became a brewer there, operations manager, and then he went to Pittsburgh through a family friend connection, became a partner brewer there, uh, and then brought us on to help develop his vision and his brand for that, and then he just got busy making some wacky stuff. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize they were in I heard his name. I was like, oh, they got to be local. I didn't realize he moved to... No, he's out in Pittsburgh. All right. And uh, we're going to be, by the end of this year, we're going to be launching a second Pittsburgh brewery, uh, a totally different brand that we're working on right now. I was like... It's crazy. By the end of this year, I think we're GBH will be somewhat responsible for a significant percentage of Pittsburgh's craft beer. So I'm guessing, like you talked about the different divisions. I'm guessing that's where you spend a lot of your time now. Oh, yeah, almost all of it. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. like um, I mean, brand, I, brand I development. Read, I read the editorial when most of you guys do. Like that's when I see most of it. Uh, uh-huh. I weigh in on some like industry specific stuff or like strategic insights, that kind of or connections and things like that. But uh, that thing is just cranking away with all those people. It's awesome. We have better photographers and better writers than I ever was. Was this was this always crazy. part of your plan, or you just kind of saw it and said, "Hey, let's just go in the in these directions." I always knew the I always knew the studio would end up being the thing, just because I knew editorial long before I started. I knew editorial was not going to be the business. Um, all these people talking about beer media kind of going away now and suffering from lack of advertising and stuff. I was like, Jesus Christ, guys! That was writing on the wall twenty years ago. Like. I never started this thing expecting to make a dime off the editorial for that reason. Yeah. Right. So we built that we built that to be a break even proposition. I was like, as long as this exists, it's basically an alternative magazine for me. Like it's industry specific, it has a purpose, and like it serves that purpose well. And all signs are pointing to that being a successful strategy, but it's also a, a humble strategy, right? I'm not trying to aim beyond its means. Mm-hmm. So um, that's going great. So I focus on the business side of things, which is the studio. Uh, that that is where that's what I'm built for. That's what I know really well. Uh-huh. Um, the editorial side, I turned that over to Brian and and Austin, who are much better at that than I ever was. Yeah, right on. Very cool, man. Yeah, we opened up the double vanilla imperial milk stout. I gotta try this thing. Yeah, from uh, Cinderlands in uh, Pittsburgh. The thing I love to hate about Paul is that he makes all the wacky shit that I complain about, but he makes it better than anybody. <laughs> and so I always end up having to like concede the point <laughs> that it's a delicious beer. Right. Um, Man, yeah, he's a, he's a goofy guy. Uh, I should say that um, this year we partnered with a social media company called Vero. Uh, they started out in Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Vero dot co. We're posting a bunch of like content there specific to the festival. <coughs> so there's like an uppers and downers specific like account you can follow with Vero, uh, where we're doing like interviews and, and stories from the fest and all that stuff. 
And when we go to London and Berlin, like that's where we're going to keep that story going. Oh, um, nice. So you can follow us on there. I feel like, is that? I don't need, a, I don't think I need another Twitter account. I feel like that's that platform <laughs> that, did it blow up or pop last year at? Uppers and downers, like that's when it kind of blew up on. I don't know. The there's Vero, the, there's Vimeo, uh, but Vimeo's been around. Yeah, yeah Vimeo's been around a bit. No, this is pretty new. I think it's new to me anyway. Yeah, but uh, they saw what we were doing, and they're like focused on like creative communities and stuff like that. Oh, so, okay. Uh, they saw a chance to like talk to a bunch of people who are interested in like craft beverage and like cool stuff around that. Nice. So yeah, we're gonna try it out. It's a beautiful interface. Like the way it presents content is awesome. Mm-hmm. The things they always tell me are. Uh, it, they take privacy super, super seriously. Like none of this like Facebook bullshit that we're going through now. Right. Um, and then there's no algorithms. Like there's no algorithm. <laughs> it's not like what is the algorithm. It's like there isn't one. Huh. So it's like you post it. That's when it gets seen by the people that you want to see it, which is what I used to love about Instagram. You know, like I was in a place, I'd post that thing. People who were there could see it and we'd meet up and hang out and algorithms, man. I see yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just drink beer and not think about it. <laughs> there you go. Man, yeah, this uh, milk style is great. This is delicious. Nine oh. percent. Fucking Paul, man. <laughs> yeah, nine percent. Paul Schneider strikes again. Yeah. yeah. One of the first things he did when he went out there was make a coffee beer. Yes. Cool. That does it. I think so, man. Um, Michael Kaiser. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for Thanks coming. Thanks for having faces again. Yeah. It's been a minute, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so tickets are still available, yep. correct? Yep. Uh, so uh, can you w- – are tickets available at the door if you don't buy them ahead of time? Like they should be, okay. yeah. last couple of years, like, there's been some left uh, day of for door, which is cool. And then um, you can go to goodbeerhunting.com slash events, mm-hmm. and you'll see uppers and downers there. Or you can go to goodbeerhunting.com slash uppers and downers. You'll find your way either way. Um, but that's where you'll find all the events okay. on GBH. Uh, otherwise, you got to go search on Eventbrite for specific things and whatnot. So, goodbeerhunting.com slash events. You'll see it all there. Yeah, get there. Try these beers. You'll never really see them. It's always awesome when someone just makes a little uh, frappuccino. Like, I think Metro did that a couple yep. of years. It's just like, what? It's so many fun pictures. You get up there and try the um, Guinness stuff that you probably never see or didn't, pick didn't, up didn't or know didn't know. Was, <laughs> didn't know was a thing, right? <laughs> awesome. I'm glad you guys like it. So, uh, Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at BRAD, Chicago Beer Pass on Twitter at Chicago Beer Pass, Instagram, Facebook page, website, ChicagoBeerPass.com. Everything gets posted there. And we'll be back after Uppers and Downers. A little recap. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>